Tommy Ford and Jeep better watch out because the world's biggest car company is gunning for them off-road. Yeah, that's right. So Toyota has gone 4x4 four four mad in the last couple of years. We've got some really exciting new products and we're gonna talk about where does that leave Jeep and Ford who have been the heavyweights in the off-road world for a long time. Um, yeah, it's an interesting time to be in this industry, Dad. Yeah, Toyota has just come out of the gates gunning for the off-road world. I don't know what's in the water over there at Toyota, but these guys are now serious about taking on what used to be the most established brands. And, you know, I said Ford and I said Jeep. I think Land Rover is also in their sights. Yeah, for sure, because they are not only appealing for the more affordable end of the market, they're also got offerings in the high end end of the market with Lexus. So in this video, we're going to talk about what the heck is going on at Toyota, what's going on in the water over there, and what that means for some of the more old school four-wheel drive manufacturers. Now, Dad, we should clarify. Toyota has been in the off-road game for a long time. I mean, the first Gen 4 Runner debuted in 1984. You know, Tundra's been around for a couple of decades. Before that, you had T100 and the Toyota truck. So it's not that they've been missing in the uh, 4x4 scene. It's just that within like the last 10 to 15 years, we've seen TRD Pro come onto the market. And then within the last couple of years, it's just month after month, it feels like we've got a new off-road trim, a new model, a new Tacoma, a new Ford or Land Cruiser's back. Like, Tons of stuff are happening. Yeah, so before we talk about the new Forerunner and of course the new Land Cruiser, let's talk about the vehicle that we've driven. So for a long time, the Lexus GX used to be kind of a luxurious family hauler that in the used market was being used as an off-roader. But now the GX has its sights set directly at both the Defender, the new Defender, and of course, the Jeep Grand Cherokee. And what they did right with the new um, model of GX is in the past to make that vehicle into an off-road machine, you really had to modify the front end to give it more approach angle, take off the side steps, change the rubber, change the wheels, maybe a little bit of a lift. But now with this new overtrail model, you can head over to your Lexus dealer, drop 69, 70,000 on a base overtrail and have the rear locker and the center locker and the underbody protection and the tires and go hit the trail immediately, which is such a smart move that Lexus has made. Yeah, but it's more than that, Tommy, because, you know, we recently drove it we actually talked to the chief engineer, and you can tell by that conversation that they had designed it from the get-go as an off-roader. Let's start with the fact that they lowered the cowl and made the windows much bigger so that you have a better sense of the world around you. Right. I mean, really smart engineering. I would argue the GX has always been underneath a true four-wheel drive. It's based on the Land Cruiser Prado which was a vehicle sold globally, and now a version of that vehicle is sold here as a new Land Cruiser, which we'll talk about in a moment. But they've just totally embraced that world from an OEM standpoint. Um, and to be honest with you, I think it's quite a bit better than Grand Cherokee. Granted, Grand Cherokee starts a lot more affordably, but if you get like a Trailhawk Grand Cherokee in 4xE, you're going to be over $70,000. Um, I also think it's, to be honest with you, better than Land Rover. I think the Defender does some things really, really well, interior, in my opinion, a little bit more rugged on the Defender, but the GX is just a better overall package. Yeah, I mean, it starts at what, $75,000, which is right? I think it's like 69 for over trail. Well, but um, and then if you want over trail plus, you're gonna be in like the high 70s. Yeah, and so, which is right in the heart of where the Defender lives. Mm -hmm. um, and let's look at the previous generation, right? The previous generation had a chin that would scrape you know, pulling into your driveway, right? The new one, the approach angle, the departure angle, the breakover angle, it's all been designed to go off-road. They updated the KDSS uh, to make it much more off-road worthy. You can now get standard uh, tires from the factory that are all terrains. You've got underbody protection. Uh, you've got a locking rear diff, locking center diff. You've got everything that you'd want to actually go off-road, which is, of course, where both the Jeep and the Defender uh, have staked their territories. And now you've got this luxurious... Uh, dare I say it, uh, Overland Ready uh, GX going right after the heart of both of those vehicles. Yeah, and I would say in the premium class, they are currently on the top. I do love our Ineos Grenadier. It's fantastic, but I think for most folks, the Lexus is a better value proposition and a better daily driver. So in terms of the luxury off-road class, I think Lexus is at the top right now. And then if we look at- Can I just do, say a word about the Grenadier? Because it is a dark horse in this race. As you know, we bought a Grenadier mm -hmm. and we just came back from the Easter Jeep Safari where we off-roaded it uh, both uh, kind of on an overland trail. We went out to Chicken Corners and we also did some pretty hardcore off-roading. 
uh, taking into Hell's Revenge, and we had no issues keeping up with the Jeep on 35. So I think in the race for a luxury, luxurious overlanding rig uh, with 1,500 pounds of payload, the Grenadier is kind of the dark horse. And I just think that's a dark horse because people don't know what it is and the production numbers aren't that high end. It's a fantastic vehicle, but no. it is not a luxury vehicle. No, no. It doesn't it's have... An overlander. Ours doesn't even have heated seats at $80,000. So it is triple lock. Yeah. And it does I, have a snorkel. I, look, it's badass. I think it's awesome. But there's 18 dealers worldwide versus 100 million Lexus dealers. So I'm not sure it's quite... Well, 18 dealers in America. Yeah, sorry. 18 dealers in the U.S., yeah, versus 100 million Lexus dealers still. Um, I don't think it's quite the same buyer. Um, but yeah, I love the Grenadier. It's awesome. Um, okay, so um, moving on to more of the affordable quotes... Yeah, affordable. Affordable end of the spectrum. So you've got um, Jeep was the, the the player for a long time, along with Forerunner, right? Um, uh, Jeep was updated in 2018 in a new generation. Forerunner's been realistically largely the same since 2010. And of course, Bronco came along. Yep, Bronco came out. It shook up the off-road world. Model year 2021, yeah, really threw a wrench in the equation because it offered an open-air off-road driving experience with a twist, twin-turbo V6, the Raptor configuration, manual transmissions. They did a really good job with the Bronco. And um, Forerunner still, through it all, the good old... Fifth gen has been selling like a champ because it's got the built-in reliability and the capability Toyota fans have come to love, but it is ancient now, and we're right on the horizon based on Toyota's teaser picture of the new sixth gen, and this is where things are going to get real interesting. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of YouTube channels out there right now kind of, uh, dare I say it, pissing in the wind, just coming up with ideas. That's us. That's what we've been doing. No, no, we're, we're, no, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> The reason we're not pissing in the wind, Tommy, is because we went and bought the new Tacoma. And let's face it, the new Tacoma is what the Foreigner is going to be based on. We've done a lot of testing with the Tacoma since we've bought it, uh, including towing with it. Yep. Yeah, we've taken it off road. We did have our diff issue, but that's since been resolved on our truck. In including um, your slip test? Yeah, slip test, which um, is not up live, but we slip tested, four-wheel drive torture tested all of the six mid-sized trucks, and the Toyota just absolutely rocked the house. It did so well. Um, so yeah, the Tacoma, new 2.4 liter, turbo engine, hybrid available. It's a great powertrain. So far, I've been so much more impressed over the old 3.5, especially at elevation. It doesn't sound like a wheezed out dog when you're going up the mountains now, which is great. And fuel economy has been also phenomenal. We've been getting around 23 MPG when we road tripped it from Texas back to Colorado. Uh, and I suspect all this will carry over into the new Forerunner. Yeah, so look, first of all, Toyota folks are going to buy the Forerunner regardless of what they do. There's just such a strong consumer base for Toyota products and especially Forerunner. But Toyota doesn't typically mess up their big names. And if they do it as well as we hope they're going to do it, um, Jeep's got some real competition. Um, you know, Wrangler has... Um, since 2018, seen a bunch of changes, right? 3.6, the two liter engine, e-hybrid system, right? With the four by e, the 392 and the diesel. So it really had the market cornered on a huge variety of powertrains. Since then though, the Fantastic V8's gone. 392 is gone. The final edition is just happening now. At over 100,000. Diesel is dead, right? Yes. Which was a cool, a really cool option on the, the JL, which I, I think was highly under appreciated. Um, um, you know, and, and now they're really pushing the 4 by e technology, which is cool, but it's not what everybody wants. So I think they kind of slipped a little bit from that standpoint. Well, let's look at it this way, Tommy. I mean, if there's any company that knows how to do a hybrid, uh, it certainly is Toyota. They were one of the first out of the gate with the original Prius. Uh, and I will eat my new hat, which I love a lot, if there is not a Forerunner hybrid uh, you know, out before the end of the year. Yeah, right. Maybe not a plug-in hybrid, but certainly a hybrid. Now, I don't think, as much as I want it to be, I don't think the Forerunner is going to have a removable top. So Jeep and Ford still have that advantage over this vehicle. But, you know, if they do what they've been pushing with, a lot of availability of rear locker across the standpoint of the lineup, um, which both Land Cruiser and Tacoma and GX are really offering, that's great if they do that. Uh, if they push, you know, the new EKDSS system that we see on the GX, really cool piece of technology. A sway bar disconnect, which we see on Tacoma, that would be a really cool piece of technology. And that would inch this vehicle closer and closer and closer to the capability out of the box of a Wrangler. And I think the big unknown here is pricing, Tommy. Right. We know how much, you know, uh, a 
the new uh, Wrangler cost, and it ain't cheap, dude. No, we well, know the pricing on the new Land Cruiser. It also ain't cheap, as you say. Yeah, uh, but we don't know the pricing on the new Foreigner, but we do know the pricing on the Bronco, and it ain't cheap. So I think there's there's this potential for Toyota to come in and actually build a relatively, I say relatively, affordable <laughs> yeah. uh, Foreigner. Keep in mind that the average new par car price now is 47000 I hate saying that because that's such a big number. Uh, but if they want to take market share away from both uh, Wrangler and Bronco, that would be one good way of doing it. And speaking of lowering pricing, Tommy, this is exactly what Toyota has done with the new Land Cruiser. Let's talk about that. Right. So the Land Cruiser went from an eighty ninety thousand dollars vehicle to one that starts in the high fifties. Now I do have to play devil's advocate. It is a much smaller vehicle. Technically, it's a Land Cruiser Prado, so it's based on a smaller platform. But it still offers a lot of great features, standard hybrid, standard full-time four-wheel drive system with a center differential, which is huge for a lot of folks, standard rear diff lock, over 6,000 pounds of towing capacity. So look, it's it's a really compelling vehicle. And to be honest with you, it, it kind of bridges this interesting gap. Like, yes, it kind of competes with Grand Cherokee. Um, from Ford's standpoint, maybe like Explorer Timberline, but it's going to be a much more off-road capable vehicle than that. It's two row only as well. So that's a really interesting value proposition. Well, it kind of fills a hole in Toyota's lineup, right? Yeah. So currently, uh, we know the pricing on the Land Cruiser. And like you said, it starts about $55,000, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of where the Forerunner TRD Pro ends. Right. Uh, and then the first edition is going to be, we've priced it out on video, it's about $75,000, which is kind of where the Lexus GX, give or take, starts, right? So mm -hmm. it kind of slots in between... Uh, the Forerunner and the Lexus, and I know it's a different brand, but still, you know, it's both Toyota. Uh, then the question is, what does it compete with directly? And you're right, that's a tough one because, you know, when you get up to like the Explorer Timberline, you're getting into a much bigger vehicle. Yep. Uh, and, you know, when you're getting into the Grand Cherokee, uh, it's also kind of a different vehicle because the Grand Cherokee, as much as I love the fact that it's a Jeep, it's, you know, it's a family hauler, right? Whereas the Land Cruiser has always been uh, very much off-road focused, even if people have not used it as such. But they sell over 200,000 Grand Cherokees a year. So you can definitely see that's a market they're going after. And then on the, the, the big end of the standpoint, right, you got Sequoia, which is available in a TRD Pro, which is, in my opinion, um, better off-road than a Wagoneer. It's I haven't spent any time in the Expedition Timberline, but it's in that same category, probably a little better. And then, of course, Defender 130 is cool, but that's a lot more expensive vehicle. So look, everything from the, the RAV4 with a TRD off-road spec to the Sequoia with a TRD Pro spec, you've got such a huge gamut of choice that Toyota's offering with off-road capability in mind. And that's before you talk about Lexus with the GX and of course the LX. So, I mean, they're just they're going nuts in this world. And I think they're introducing products at a much faster rate than some of their competitors. And they're offering products that are very, very compelling. Yeah, what I love about living in this time is that there's no segment that has been left untouched. And what I mean by that is the old Defender, of course, was very square-jawed and kind of tractor-like, right? Mm -hmm. um, much more off-roady than the current Defender. And, you know, all of a sudden, there's Ineos, yeah. which now fills that gap that the old Defender has left. So not only do you have Toyota, you know, filling the space that a lot of, like, premier off-roaders are at now or competing for that space, you also have independent startup companies that are filling spaces that were abandoned by the traditional companies. It's just a great time uh, to love off-road vehicles. 100%. Yeah, super interesting. And we'd love to hear your feedback too. Where do you think Toyota stacks up against Ford and Jeep? And unfortunately, GM is kind of out of the off-road picture in a lot of ways. Um, but be sure to leave us a comment below. And more importantly, guys, you know we've been doing this for 14 years that we are like flies on you know what when it comes to off-roaders. And we're doing this video because very soon we feel like there will be a lot of news coming out of Toyota. So when I say please stay tuned, please stay tuned. I sh yeah, and let me clarify, GM's doing some really cool stuff with the trucks side of things. I meant the SUVs are a little minimal from General Motors. But yeah, be sure to stay tuned, Dad. You're right, watch this space, as they say. And as always, we'll see you in another video. Check out alltfl.com for more info. Ciao.